In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who led St. Martin de Porres by the path of humility to heavenly glory, grant that we may so follow his radiant example in this life as to merit to be exalted with him in heaven, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. In Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as, many as, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So through God, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir. The word of the Lord. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. <clears throat> all your creatures shall thank you, our Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign, and declare your might, O God. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time, to make known to men your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your reign. Yours is an everlasting kingdom, your rule lasts from age to age. The eyes of all creatures look to you, and you give them their food in due time. The Lord is just in all his ways, and loving in all his deeds. He is close to all who call him, who call on him from their hearts. <coughs> Alleluia, ah, alleluia, alleluia. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and heaven and earth, that thou hast hidden these things from the wise and understanding, and revealed them to babes. Yea, Father, for such was thy gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light." The Gospel of the Lord. It's often said that God writes straight with crooked lines. And I take that saying to mean that God, on account of his omnipotence and omniscience, can bring about extraordinary good from the most improbable of circumstances. The history of the church bears this claim out. Time and time again, God raises up the right person at the right time and from the most surprising of circumstances in order to preach the gospel in the way that meets the needs of the times. St. Paul is an ex excellent example. 
Scripture first reveals him as a persecutor of Christians. Yet once he finds his vocation, he becomes Christianity's greatest missionary and helps goodness knows how many people come to know our Lord. The same is true, albeit in a somewhat more subtle way, of the saint whose feast we celebrate today, Martin de Porres. Martin was born in Lima in Peru in 1579, the illegitimate son of a Spanish aristocrat and a former slave from Panama. Rejected by his father, Martin was brought up by his mother together with his sister in very challenging circumstances. And eventually he became a servant in the Dominican Priory in Lima. Subsequently, Martin became a lay brother and was put to work in the Priory's infirmary. He spent the rest of his life in the same Priory, helping the people he met in the different ways that he could. He resolutely cared for the sick, the poor and animals, and people from across Lima and beyond were drawn to visit Martin on account of his humility and piety. 25 years after his death, with the faithful beseeching his intercession, Martin's body was exhumed and discovered to be intact and fragrant. Subsequently, Martin was beatified in 1837 and canonized in 1962. Now, there's a real sense in which one can say Martin became a saint in spite of his Dominican life, not because of it. Martin didn't write any books. He didn't teach philosophy or theology. He wasn't a priest. He didn't preach homilies or give missions. He didn't really do anything distinctively Dominican. That's not to say there was anything wrong with Martin's life, just that it didn't fit the classical Dominican mold. Indeed, had the prior of Lima not been willing to bend the rules in Lima at the time Martin sought admission, Martin would never have had the chance to become a Dominican or indeed any other religious in any of the other congregations in Lima. It's almost as if God used the order to provide Martin with a context in which he could flourish, at least spiritually. God bent the order in Lima to his will to provide Martin with the stage in which he could manifest his heroic virtue. God wrote straight, we might say, with crooked lines. Why do this, though? Well, bringing people to God is ultimately God's business. So also are the means through which God encourages other people to get to know him. We can, <clears throat> we can and we should use the means which our order specializes in to bring people to God. That's as it should be. But we also have to be open to God throwing a spanner in the works and doing something different. Effectively, that's what happened in Lima with Martin, and there's no reason to think God won't do the same in different times and in different places. We need to make sure we pay enough attention to God to recognize the direction in which he is moving us so that we always pick up on the fresh flowerings of the gospel which God brings about.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of your people, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, by the example of Blessed Martin, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbour, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example, by communion with them you give us companionship, by their intercession sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us, and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Martin, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind, kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. To Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. I graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you 